Hello. Every time that a class comes down to the library, one of the big parts of my job is showing them how to use the databases. But we all forget how to do that sometimes, and so I just wanted to kind of give you a really quick walkthrough of how to access the databases and why you want to access the databases. So first things first, you're going to start in your favorite search engine. Mine is Google. Yours might be something else. That's fine. I'm not judging. Um, and then I'm going to just type in McMath Library. And the downside of this is that there's a few too many steps involved. You can go to the first one, you can go to the second one, it'll still take a little while. I like the second one a little bit better, it's a little faster, so, but it takes a bit of time to load. Eventually this is where you will end up anyway, but you want the one that says portal. So here you go, this is the website, I put this together, it could be more beautiful, but the main thing that you're looking for is this one right here. Now this one says library catalog, this one says databases. I really wanted this one to work right out of the gate, but the way that the databases work, it's a little bit clunky, and so I'm going to start here. So this takes you to the catalog. This is what you're used to. This is what you see every time you get onto a computer or an iPad at McMath. And to get to the, get to the databases, you just want to hit this tab here, the one that says visual. This one. I'm zooming in. This guy right there. Visual. It should say databases. It doesn't, and it's frustrating, I understand. Um, and that will probably change in the new year, but for now, this is the deal. So click visual and you get to here. And as you probably notice right out of the gate, this does look a little bit old and dated, and I promise it is getting updated pretty quick. Now, what I want to walk you through uh, is so you've got these databases, they're all great. Uh, which ones should you be using? Uh, it kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, there's lots and lots of things that you might want to look at. If you're a teacher, check out ASCD eBooks. These are all educational books uh, that are available to you in ebook form. If you're a student and you have to do a debate, I strongly recommend Canadian Points of View. I'll just show you quickly what that is. So. This is where we got. I wanted to get here quickly, so good. So this is the user login and password space. So if you are at home and you're trying to log in, uh, you're going to get to this space. So you have to remember what the school's username and password are. I can show you the username, but I will not tell you the password simply because uh, anyone can access this, and so I just want to keep everything secure. Okie dokie. So the main thing to remember when you're doing that, so again, let's go back. The main thing to remember is that you are typing in M-C-M-A-T. There's no H. And then your password. Uh, so that might have been what I was doing wrong. Okay, so Canadian Points of View is spectacular if you are doing research on a contemporary issue or if you have to do a debate. Um, I know sometimes uh, science teachers do debates. I know French classes do debates. And so if you have an issue that you're thinking about doing, and chances are good that you, you'll have a menu to choose from, you will find it here. So in science class, maybe you're going to do something about DNA profiling. Should people be profiled on their DNA? And then you can help catch criminals. And so I'll give you a quick click of one of those. It starts off with an introduction to the evidence. It gives you some of the vocabulary that you might need to know, and it gives you the background on that particular issue, which is good. It's a good starting point. It also has a bibliography. This is great. So if you're doing further research, you can access these books, perhaps. And then here's what I really wanted to show you. You have point and counterpoint. So I'm going to be saying DNA profiling is good. Uh, this is what we need. And so I'm going to click that. That's my first point. So I can get my way through this and learn a whole bunch of stuff and, and get a really solid argument. And then there's the counterpoint. So that might be the argument the opposite side is going to present. I would strongly rec recommend reading both of them so that you can kind of respond and, and anticipate the things that the other people are thinking about. But it's really, really interesting, and it provides uh, some questions to think about, some arguments. It's pretty darn handy. Handy, And then there's additional kind of useful information here along the way. Uh, you get something on what like experts might weigh in on. So I strongly recommend checking this out. It's amazing. So that's Canadian points of view. Uh, the next one I'm going to recommend for you guys is, well, if you're a teacher, I really recommend using Curio. Curio for teachers is amazing. So it takes content from CBC. That includes radio content, news content, TV shows, all kinds of stuff, and it presents it. Uh, you, you can stream it in your classroom, you can use it in the class, and a lot of it comes 
with teacher resources. So you get lessons that go with it, you get all kinds of handy things. So should, I just picked randomly a, a documentary, should pit bulls be banned? And really, really interesting. I wanna show this in my class. If you have an account, then you can access this. If you don't have an account, you need to make one. And teachers, if you want to make an account so that you can watch and plan and organize around this stuff, definitely come and see me. I will tell you the, the code to do that and you're off to the races. Um, but the, the amazing thing that Curio has, and I really, really wanna show this off, is you can organize it by curriculum. So there's teacher guides, there's tutorials, organizing by curriculum I hit that so resources curricula takes me to British Columbia fantastic now I've got the curriculum of BC right here and so if I'm a math teacher I can click here and it has given me some math options if I'm teaching foundations of math and pre-calculus 10 click it now here we go I've got 10 different results on things that I could use in my classroom this is great if you have a TOC coming in this is great if you just need to get some marking done and and just need someone else to to do something for the class or if you just want something to supplement what you're already doing there's a ton of useful stuff and it ranges in age so some of this is from 2004 so you might not want to use it maybe you do I mean measuring risk is still relevant and important but you might want to just check and make sure that the date and, and definitely you want to preview whatever you're going to use um, I love some of this stuff like Here's a quick one on why we need electoral reform and a quick visual explanation using Lego blocks. Those are the kinds of things that, you know, we want our students to know and think about. So that is Curio. Um, just really quickly, one other thing to mention. So some of it's in French. That's fantastic for French immersion teachers. Uh, if you are, let's, I'm just going to pick Art Foundations here. There's some additional stuff, including uh, lesson plans along the way. So because I'm not locked, logged in with my username and password, it's not gonna show me, but a lot of times if I click something, it's gonna have a quick, easy lesson plan ready to go, and that can save you some time. Of course, you're gonna wanna change most of it, but there's worksheets, there's questions, there's discussion guides, there's all kinds of stuff. So Curio is really nice and it's always being updated so anything that happens today will get added shortly into curio so you can stay up to date on cur uh, current events in your class there's a ton of cool stuff you can do so that's curio so we've covered canadian points of view we've covered a little bit about ascd ebooks we did curio now i'm going to show you the big the big boss of using the databases here, and that's Gale Power Search. So Gale Power Search is a database that collects resources all through Gale. So you'll notice this is from Gale, this is from Gale. Um, there's a couple others that are put together by Gale. This one collects all of them and allows you to search right away. So here we go, I've, I have to put in the password because I'm accessing from home, boom. Hopefully that's gonna work. Great, so here I am, I'm at Gale Power Search. So this is a fantastic database for people doing science research, people doing social studies research, pretty much just any old type of research that you're going to do, it's gonna be on here. Um, of course, the more recent an issue is, the fewer resources there are going to be probably, but it kind of depends on the topic. So I've decided that I wanna do my Top, I'm going to do a research project for my history class, and I want to look up the Battle of Kursk. I've heard about it. It sounds really cool. My teacher told me it was important. So I look up the Battle of Kursk. It has given me, so here we go. It's going to start off by giving me magazines. But if I check out the side panel here, it tells me a whole bunch of stuff. So I've got 48 magazine articles I can access. Magazine articles are nice because they're written for the layman to read. And so they're, the vocabulary is clear and it's straightforward, easy to follow. But sometimes they're a bit short. Um, for example, this one is only 200 words long. Hmm, I don't know that I'm going to want to use that. Um, if you decide that magazines are not the direction you want to go, then academic journals are available to you as well. Of course, academic journals are written by professionals, by experts, and so they can be a little bit heavy and the vocabulary can be a little bit intense. And also it includes things like book reviews. So you might want to trim that out. Most of the academic journal articles showing up here, those are actual 
uh, book reviews and so I don't really want to use those in my research so I might decide to exclude those when I'm going it guides me to six different books these are chapters from books biographies of different people um, so th some of that might be useful it kind of depends not always uh, I don't know what David M Glantz has to do with the Battle of Kursk um, so I might not love that but then it's also got news articles you'll also sometimes find videos and pictures that go with it and you definitely want to take advantage of those so if I'm let's say that I have to do something in planning class about um, sexual health um, and I'm dreading this and I'm not sure what to do and I, I'm worried great good news is here are some videos available for you and so a little bit of that will support you in what you have to do with your class and so don't feel like you always have to go to YouTube or you always have to go to other databases to get there this one can help you a lot as well now I'm gonna go back to the beginning this is the the opening page of Gale Power Search, and I want to show everybody this. If you're a student or a teacher, you should check this out. So this little thing that says Topic Finder, for the longest time I ignored it, but if you click it, it's extremely useful. So what Topic Finder does is it takes a big topic and it breaks it up and lets you visualize it in a different way. So if I'm going to choose a big topic, let's say I want to do genetic engineering. I've decided that for my science fair project I want to study genetic engineering but it's such a big topic and I don't know where to go so I type in genetic engineering into topic finder it takes the really big term of genetic engineering and it breaks it into sub sub areas and so any one of these little tiles is going to help me kind of get a little bit further so if I decide I'm like oh genetic engineering in fish cool so I can click that and it's guided me to a couple of useful resources on genetic engineering and fish. It's not so much the resources that I'm excited about, it's that I've helped myself kind of narrow down my topic. Now, the tiles format looks cool and it's very flashy and interesting, but I really love the wheel format. The wheel allows you to visualize this in a different way, but it's still super interesting. So my topic of genetic engineering has now been broken up into research, plant genetics, animal genetic engineering, gene, DNA, humans. This is good. This is a good starting point. And then it's broken it even further. So if I'm kind of, I myself am a bit of a plant fanatic. I love um, biology of plants. So I want to look at genetic engineering of plants and how it affects, mm, let's go, how the genetic engineering of plants affects animals. Look at that. So I've just clicked there and it has already guided me to 12 articles that relate to plant genetic engineering and its effect on animals, as well as animal genetic engineering. So it's taken these two different subjects and kind of helped me. And so this has got me as a researcher or as a student thinking a little bit more clearly about where I want to go. I might not love these articles in the long run. I might decide that I'm going to go and do a bunch of additional research and go elsewhere. But this process right here saved me a ton of time and allowed me to do some pretty good thinking. And it also helps me think about how Google works. So if I went to Google and I just typed in genetic engineering, it's going to throw me all kinds of crazy information from a whole bunch of subject areas. And that's too much. So I need to narrow it down a little bit. And then I need to narrow it down a little bit more so that I can get specific and get a clear goal of what I want to do on my project. All right. So that's Gale Power Search. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff here that I would love to show you at another time. For the time being, this is a really good starting point. Those three are probably my top three resources. Uh, consumer health is really helpful if you want to do something about medicine or, or well-being. Um, the Encyclopedia of BC, Canadian Biography, and Canadian Encyclopedias, those are all kind of useful when it comes to social studies and history, um, but they're not going to have contemporary people. We recently discovered that. We went looking for like current ministers of, of different departments and they didn't show up in here. You have to be dead to get in input into one of these books, which is kind of a bummer.
Um, the other one here that's super, super useful is Tumble Books. If you're looking for a book to read with your kids, you could use Tumble Books. And you get all kinds of interesting books in here. Uh, you can get picture books, you can get books for teens, you get all kinds of stuff. And they are ebooks, they're available. And what's cool about them as well is that you can actually listen to them. So let's say I decide I want to go to the paper bag princess, some of them allow me to actually listen online. So I don't think paper bag princess, let's take a look. I click paper bag princess, uh, it wants me to enable flash player, okay, I'm going to allow. Oh yeah, look at that, so I get sound, I get everything. There was a princess named Elizabeth who was going to marry a prince named Ronald. Unfortunately, a large dr So I just wanted to show you that. It's available. It's here. Um, students can use it. Teachers can use it. It's really handy for all kinds of purposes. That is actually Robert Munch reading the book and so it's pretty darn cool it's pretty darn handy um, it's not just for kids books though it's not just for elementary school that we've got one for teens and that can be handy as well so it's a lot of orca readers it's also got things like Romeo and Juliet it's got a read-along so tumble books is is pretty darn great and it's also got some classic books that you might use in class like look at that brave new world is available so that's tumble books. Um, other than that, I would encourage you to look around, poke around, see what's there, and try these things out. We we invested a lot of money in allowing students and teachers to use this, and so I really just want to make sure that you know that they're there and you know that you can use them. You can use them at home. You can use them at school, and they're they're pretty darn cool. So I think that covers it for today. These are the databases. These are the ones that we have at McMath, and that's how you access them. Uh, if you want to go back to your normal search, just hit basic, and there we are. We're back at the normal catalog. So I hope that helps, and I hope you end up using some of these sometime, and uh, I hope they change the way that you do stuff in class.